So what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So when Dragon Ball Super Broly was released, Nagamine, the director of the film, specifically stated that Broly and Goku were truly pure Saiyans and that that is how he chose to depict those characters due to the fact that they really are the only truly pure Saiyans around. So what exactly does he mean by this and why is it that Broly is pure of heart despite the fact that he never was influenced by a character like Grandpa Gohan like Goku? Well, that's what we're going to learn today. We're going to take a step back and we're going to look at all the events and how exactly it feeds into the idea that Broly is pure of heart. And by the end of this video, you should have a better understanding of why Broly is truly a pure Saiyan. First of all, let's think about what exactly makes a Saiyan impure. What makes a Saiyan impure is their need to survive. Okay, so essentially the idea is if Goku had never hit his head, he was a low-class Saiyan warrior, and according to Akira Toriyama, low-class Saiyan warriors very rarely survive being sent to the planet that they are sent to, and that's because they're weak in comparison to the rest of the Saiyans. So, the idea is that when a Saiyan is put into this situation, their need to survive and thrive as a species, and their need for combat is what corrupts them. So the reason Goku was so wild and completely different than he was after hitting his head and being influenced by Grandpa Gohan, who was a pure-hearted character himself, is because he is an instinctual creature, and the part of his instincts that is the most powerful is his need to survive. So that means that as soon as Goku was put into a situation to where he would need to use violence in order to survive, he would give in to his need for violence and then continue to use that need for violence in order to create a more suitable scenario for himself to come out on top because that's how Saiyans work. Raditz even talks about this whenever he first meets Goku about how once they get into the groove of using combat to survive, they become addicted to it. And so due to the fact that they're addicted to this feeling that they get in battle, they associate this feeling that they get in battle with bloodshed. And so that creates this domino effect where the Saiyans end up what most people would consider evil, but not due to the fact that they are actually evil, but due to the fact that they are instinctual creatures who have to rely on their instincts in order to survive in many different scenarios. So this plays on the source of evil within the Buddhist context. Within the Buddhist context, it is considered that the source of all evil is our survival instincts. There are things that you would do as an individual you may consider yourself a pretty good person, but there are things that you would do as an individual that are not good if you were put into a situation where you needed to survive. And that right there is what corrupted the Saiyans. I did a whole video about this called The Death of Kakarot and the Rebirth of the Saiyans. If you want to learn more about this in terms of the societal change that the Saiyans went through. But in that video, I talked about how Broly was an example of the progression of Saiyan society. And I went into that in a lot of detail. So Broly in that film is a representation of the development of Saiyan society. Now what do I mean by that? Well the Saiyans were originally a primitive species who were corrupted by their need to survive and that sent them into a never ending cycle of doom due to the fact that they were constantly doing things that were counterproductive to their own survival because they were such ego-driven creatures that they didn't think in the long term, they thought in the short term. So like, for example, this idea that the Saiyans would steal planets and sell them in order to ensure a better world for themselves as a species is very, very short-sighted because what happened? Frieza came in, somebody else who was better at capitalism than the Saiyans, and wiped them out. This idea that a lot of people have that conscious effort is something the Saiyans have when it comes to being evil. Like they consciously choose to do evil things. That is true, but they don't consciously choose to do evil things because they are evil, okay? Your conscious thought, you may think, is derived from a very purposeful place. You put a lot of thought into the things that you do. Now, you may not realize it, but a lot of that is due to your instincts. Even your conscious thoughts, your emotions and things, are derived from your instincts. When you're happy, it's because you're in the proper environment. When you're sad, it's because you're not in the proper environment. When you're angry, it's because you feel like you're being robbed of what you needed to live in a proper environment. And all of those things feed into our psyche and how we think about things. 
and how we behave in different scenarios. So our instincts themselves have a huge impact on our conscious thoughts. Now why exactly is it that Broly did not turn out like the Saiyans in that way? Well, it is due to the fact that Broly is naturally the dominant life form on his planet due to the fact that he lived in a primitive area in a very, very simple environment where he thrived as the dominant life form, the alpha predator of his environment. He never felt the need to give in to his survival instincts. So not only does he maintain a very pure notion of his animal instincts in the sense that he is very simple and pure like a caveman, but he has never ever been motivated to destroy those around him in order to survive. And that is why, despite the fact that Paragus tries very hard to push this idea of Saiyan culture onto Broly, it never works because Broly was born in an environment and raised in an environment that fostered his inner nature in terms of his animal-like innocence and purity, but he also lived in an environment that he thrived in and mastered at a very, very, very young age. So he never had to struggle to survive. He was the dominant life form on his planet, and that prevented him from ever giving in to his survival instincts on a conscious level. He was just influenced by the dominant life forms on planet Vampa, which was Ba and his kind, and he decided to try and live like them because they were the dominant life forms and they didn't have any issues surviving on their planet. Now, cavemen, which is essentially what Broly is, they have two extremes to their attitude. You'll notice that in a lot of entertainment and media, whenever a caveman is shown on screen, in a lot of cases, he will go from being completely innocent and childlike, uh, very curious about his environment and the things that are going on around him, to being completely dominated by his survival instincts in a scenario where his life is in danger. So, how often have you seen this trope where a caveman will be very innocent and childlike one minute, and then the second that they're exposed to something that puts their life in danger like fire or a, a dangerous animal or things of that nature, their survival instincts turn on and they immediately behave like a wild animal with violent intentions. That is essentially what Broly is. There are two extremes to his personality. He either A, is very innocent and pure and childlike, or the second his survival instincts are activated, he acts as though he's a violent, vicious predator. And that is why Broly is pure in a way that the other Saiyans are not. Now, one of the greatest examples and the way that Broly's purity is explained to us in Dragon Ball Super Broly the film is his relationship with Ba. He felt a sense of camaraderie with Ba. He felt a connection to Ba, and that is because he and Ba were both the dominant life forms on the planet, and he did not feel as though he was in any danger when facing Ba. He felt that he could handle him, and that is the reason that he tamed him and became friends with him, because Broly never had anything to worry about against Ba. He could have wiped him out the whole time. And likewise, Ba was a creature who only did, on an instinctual level, what he needed to survive. When he was attacking Broly, he thought that Broly was a danger to his life. And when Broly made it clear that Ba was no longer a danger to his life, that's whenever they started to form this bond. So that is Toriyama's way, and the series' way, of showing you this dynamic, this instinctual, animal-like dynamic that Broly and Ba both share, that they have these two extremes to their personality. They're either a vicious predator who tries to destroy everything around them, or they're very innocent and childlike, and they don't have any ill intentions within the context of, like, conscious intent of destroying someone else. It's all instinct. Goku was imprinted by Grandpa Gohan's pure heart to use martial arts to tame his survival instincts, because that's what martial arts is really about, is taming and using your survival instincts correctly, and not letting them dominate your conscious thoughts. That's essentially the idea behind martial arts. So Goku has always had the potential to go the other way. And, and become a vicious predator. But due to the fact that he was imprinted by Grandpa Gohan. He continuously uses martial arts to keep himself in check. And prevent himself from falling victim to that part of his nature. Now Broly, it's the same thing. He's always had the capability of 
giving in to that aspect of his nature. But due to the fact that he is so simple and pure, when his survival instincts kick in, his conscious intent of destroying his opponent is dominated by his survival instincts and not by some conscious idea of destroying your opponent. And that's the reason you'll notice that as soon as Paragus orders Broly to fight Goku and Vegeta, he starts losing control of himself. Not completely, but Broly is very volatile in the sense that when he's in battle, his survival instincts are more potent than someone like Goku and Vegeta's, which is why his Akari state is relevant. And Super Saiyan, rage is a part of your survival instincts. Now, this doesn't mean that Broly is incapable of having conscious violent intent, because he did have the intentions of hurting Goku and Vegeta, but again, what's really important to consider here within context is what exactly is being told to Broly at that time. He is still doing what he's doing with a pure heart and pure intentions. He's not doing it because he has any ill intent. They are actually taking advantage of Broly's purity and his pure heart to make him violent. And that is extremely, extremely important because that shows you why the Saiyans turned out exactly like they did. Paragus is a representation of that generation of Saiyans who have essentially been corrupted by their ego and their need to survive, and then pushing that on to the next generation over and over and over and over again. So, Broly didn't fall victim to this aspect of Saiyan nature for a very, very long time. But Paragus came the closest to corrupting Broly in this way due to the fact that he put him in a position to manipulate him in order to be violent and do unjust acts in the name of vengeance. So essentially, what makes Broly pure of heart is the fact that he retains a bit of their animal-like nature in the sense that he's very innocent and pure and he doesn't have any ill intent. He doesn't have the intent to actually hurt anyone. So essentially, Broly is completely free of his ego. He is completely free from his sense of identity, which is what Martial arts teaches us, which is why Goku, again, is continuously free of this, because martial arts is based around freeing yourself from the ego. And Broly does that naturally. Broly is pure in the same way that Goku was stated to be in the original Dragon Ball. He has the heart of a baby or an animal. And that is why Broly is pure of heart, despite the fact that it's very uncommon for Saiyans to become pure of heart, that's also why the ancient Saiyans were pure and good, because they had also not been corrupted by their survival instincts. But anyway, I just thought this was a really interesting topic to cover on the video, because a lot of people have asked me about why exactly Broly is pure of heart. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.